Alors, Mesdames, Messieurs, le maire de Québec, Monsieur Régis Labeau, le tout de suite, j'ai une période de questions au micro à l'avant. Monsieur le maire. Oui, alors, Monsieur le Premier ministre, Monsieur le Premier ministre, Merci, Monsieur le Ministre, et les membres de la National Assemblée, et les élèves de la Chambre des communes, vous faites and we fell Ben Abdelan, who will be introducing his colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Premier, and ministers and MNAs and members of the House of Commons, thank you for all of you in this cause, because, and for all causes, because we're citizens and we're all in it. Uh, representatives from the three mosques and a member of the uh, Cultural Islamic Centre and and Mr. Salah Berki from the Belagir Mosque and Mrs. Raja, Mr. Malik Ouremi from the al Mosque. And I noticed here amongst us members from the Moroccan Association, represented from Mr. Boubous, and uh, they, are, uh, they are the ones who have come here for a few moments. So thank you, all of you. Thank you, Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Yizé. Uh, uh, there are no political parties here today. We're all in it together. We're all here in solidarity. Well, here's where we're at. We met with the representatives of the community. The first message is, we're at your service. This evening, there will be a vigil. All of us will be there together, the Premier, my colleagues. We will be on site of the vigil. The community will be meeting at 7.30 this evening. The, those who are uh, linking up with the city of Quebec are with them, and they will be asking of our compatriots, what can we do more to help them to lessen the sorrow, to lessen the pain? Essentially, this is where we're at. Tomorrow morning, we will meet again here and to see exactly what we can do to improve the situation uh, in the hearts of our colleagues uh, of the Muslim community. This is where we're at for the rest of them, the various uh, police forces and everything. Mr. Quatre will, will be telling you uh, in a few moments. Uh, the Premier of Quebec, thank you, dear friends. As we said yesterday, we're all Quebecers, all of us, each one of us. We are a large nation, a large large people, but we're even more united today. I will have the opportunity this afternoon to speak to the people in a different uh, venue, but the few words that I'm now going to be uttering, I want them to be first and foremost directed to the Muslim community of the city of Quebec who are here with us, and we must listen to them. We have to listen to them and hear them as to what they're saying. Uh, I know they know a few words. Let, may peace be with you. I know in the name of God and his uh, blessings. Monsieur le ministre Duclos. Uh, Minister Duclos. Oui, Is he here? Yes, here we go. Bonjour et merci uh, greetings ici ce matin. and thank you for having come here this morning. I want to thank the city of Quebec for the very fast and efficient efforts that have put forward so that the tragedy of last evening assemble us today, so that we might live together the pain and suffering that the Muslim community is coming to grips with. I'd also want to point out how much this is one attack on one of our communities, but it is an attack of all the various communities in Quebec to the extent that we must all be together to live through these terrible events and these very sad uh, moments. Let us uh, 
I'll say how much we have suffered for the past few hours. In the name of the Canadian government, I'm surrounded by other members from the Quebec region, from various political parties. I want to point out to what extent uh, their presence and that of the Right Honourable the Prime Minister later this afternoon does underline this event and how it calls upon our emotions and how much we are all together and we will be able to cope in hours and days to come. Thank you. Uh, uh, the Right Honourable the Prime Minister called me a moment ago and I want to thank him for coming later. A member of the mosque to say a few words. Words lack us in this situation to express to you not only the pain in our hearts because we've lost men, men who began their life here in Quebec, but there are no words to fully express the solidarity that has flowed from the mayor, from the premier of Quebec, from representatives of the federal government uh, who have come here to comfort us. And we feel comforted because we feel that we are full-fledged citizens. This solidarity honors us and honors you. It is a tribute to you. We are full-fledged Quebecers. I would like to tell the world at large that when you touch one part of our body, the entire body suffers. So there are people, this, this despicable people who have touched this Muslim community. It is the very fabric of the Quebec community, the Canadian population that has been affected, and they are here to express exactly what I've just said. We are very proud indeed to be Quebecers. We're very proud to be Canadians, and we're very proud to belong to this nicest city in the world, Quebec City. I swear to you, I've always said this. I said it throughout the world. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you. Monsieur, Madame. Ladies and gentlemen, Bonjour. greetings. Merci venu. Thank you for having come. Vraiment, really, je peux pas I can't express le fully the terrible sorrow that has affected our community with this tragedy of last evening. It was held in a place of worship with people who were praying at the time. I had a, a testimony from one of the survivors of that tragedy who described the situation to me from inside the mosque. Those plus, who were que les gens qui sont targeted en prière. are those that were standing and praying. Vraiment, une I mean, this is a true Je tragedy, tiens. really. And ça fait chaud au coeur I mean, my heart is warmed. I feel good about the fact that there are members of the media are here, members of the National Assembly, members of the House of Commons, provincially, federally, the mayor, everybody, everybody have shown solidarity with us all. And for that matter, the entire Quebec population and Canadian people, we are deeply, deeply touched by this solidarity, and it warms our hearts, and it lessens our sorrow. Really, it does. We, in the Islamic Center, well, that was one of our concerns, security, and the security of our community within the mosque. It was one of our major concerns. We were prepared, therefore, to arm ourselves against any possibility of this happening. But we were caught off guard. We were caught off guard. Uh, I pay tribute to the police forces and the RRCMP. I call upon them to help us in the future to improve the safety of our places of worship. I want to, uh, war, uh, to say thank, thank you to all members of the media and the members of the National Assembly and of the House of Commons. We are deeply touched. Thank you so much.
Salah. Hi. Ah, oh, he's right here. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> greetings. <coughs> My name is Salah Banakhet. I'm part of the uh, Association of Mosques in the capital. I wasn't uh, at the mosque, but I was informed by an individual who was inside the mosque and a member of our association. Uh, usually that person would have been there to speak, but she's suffering tremendous shock and was unable to come here today. I'm deeply touched by uh, messages of condolence following uh, what His Worship did and what our Premier did and the, and the Minister of Public Safety. I received phone calls at 2 o'clock in, in the morning, somebody calling the mosque, but the mosque um, forwarded the call to my cell phone. Donc, Sir, we Quebecers love you. We love you. He said it well because he fully grasped the mayor's message. Matinée, During the morning, I received phone calls from all over, from the U.S. I even received a call de, du from a friend from, the, from Limoilou College. Vu. We hadn't spoken to each other for a while. He expressed his condolences, his sympathy to me, and he said to me, I have to hug you. He said to me, it's not because it's, it's not right that it be people like you who have to go through such sorrow. So thank you for being here, and please express this message of sympathy to humanity at large. Malik. Malik. It's a very sad day for the Muslim community in Quebec City. But it's a sad day for the province of Quebec and for Canada at large. It would... My, uh, I want to once, once again, as my colleagues have, have done, thank all levels of government, municipal, provincial and federal, who have shown their support and their love and I want to underline those words. And I'm not just throwing bouquets, but we all felt that love and that support and the solidarity. For my brothers of the Muslim community, prayer and meditation and support, we really need this for days to come. And for Quebecers, our colleagues, our compatriots, our Canadian friends, I say that the, we are confronted with a long road to travel by way of communication, by way of cooperation, by making people aware. We already began this uh, years ago. The Islamic Centre was very much involved. Uh, there were open et doors each and every year. We, you were invited to come to these ans. open doors. All ici, the organizations here present today have uh, done so, just as the Muslim community in Quebec has done. We are pleased to be able to work with you uh, so that we might uh, have a good life with all Quebecers. Thank you. Bonjour, Greetings, each one of you. Le drame qui nous a touché, the drama qui that a has affected us, Québécoise that has affected Quebec society, have terribly upset us. It upset us just as we are upset at any violent act throughout the world that affects humanity at large, whether Quebec or elsewhere. We are against all violent acts, against anyone 
at any time. Le message que j'ai à passer, uh, this, this, uh, these uh, days that I have to live through is that confiance. our children Et trust us and we want to continue to earn that trust. We want to nourish it through work le travail en collaboration by the work we do in cooperation with all institutions. We want to sur la bonne voie, keep these children on the right track to make of them Canadiens. good Quebec Mes and Canadian citizens. Les, les My deepest condolences to all families who have been affected by this tragedy. I just wanted to add something. We were speaking about safety and security. The best security, to my mind, is good education for our children, for adults, for our youth, because education, 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 that's the message I want to give. Thank you. Now there's a microphone here in the room. Apparently, and there are microphones on each side of the room, so if you have any questions, please use the microphones. We will begin by questions in French and then we will go into questions in English. Mr. Labon, what are the next steps for the city of Quebec with respect to managing this crisis? Well, it's really the police officers that are lead, uh, leads in the investigation. Where, uh, we want to see to it that the witnesses to the shooting are followed. There were questions asked yesterday. Uh, this evening we have the vigil. So we, for all intents and purposes, are serving the community. They will be expressing their needs this evening, and tomorrow morning we'll be meeting with them again and based on their needs and what they will be telling us this evening. So everything uh, was covered. Everything that had to be covered was covered. If you want to make uh, gifts or donations, uh, some people want to make donations, cash donations, get in contact with the um, multi-ethnic center, the three one one. Uh, we we have uh, operators on, on site there. Uh, Anybody who wants to get in touch with us, we have very special people that are in constant touch with the Muslim community, and we're trying to look after people. Okay, let's say 311 and 211 service to the city, uh, given by the city. And for a practical reason now, uh, we are uh, es establishing a register now, a book of condolences, in other words, so people might be able to sign it. And the various delegations of the Quebec throughout the world are also doing it. The book will be also made available online for anybody who wishes to participate. What are the needs of the Muslim community at the moment? Can someone answer that question? What are the immediate needs? Well, first and foremost, we want to feel safe. Uh, we want to have a good sounding, as we've heard from all levels of government, that we are considered as citizens, and we are Muslim citizens of the city of Quebec, the province of Quebec, and Canada at large. That's an awful lot of people uh, in the Muslim community. And very often, they feel that they're still being marginalized. And that uh, this despicable event will now motivate us to work together throughout the province. And the, we want safety, security, and we want to have the ways and means to show what is a society, a society that participates in the life of the province of Quebec. And I'm not being political by saying there has to be jobs, jobs so that our children continue uh, and feel that they are full-fledged citizens and that they be able to live and work and um, raise their own children. That's a pressing need, and that will enable people to feel that they have been uh, not taken for granted. Uh, Premier, a question was asked a few hours ago. Now, do we know why the Muslim community was the target? What is the meaning of this attack? I would like to answer in more specific terms. We're at the very beginning of an investigation. Police officers are conducting it. It would be immature for me to go into any 
theory. Uh, what I do know as a fact, an undisputable fact, is that this specific community was targeted. That's true. The individuals who were savagely attacked were attacked because they are part of that community. That's the kind of answer I could give as to the details and the motivation behind the attack. Let's be cautious, first and foremost. I know that for you it's difficult because you would want to uh, deal with with everything as quickly as possible. But, but I mean, we can't do this now. It's at the beginning of the investigation. As soon as it will be possible, we will be there for you and give you the details. Whether it's a young Quebecer, uh, a full-fledged Quebecer, and another one who would be apparently of Moroccan origin, can you read something from this? Well, it's unwise to have any hypothetical answer to this question. Let the investigation pursue its course. Nicolas Vigneault from the CBC. I see everybody here meeting here. The message that you're giving us today, is it a message of tolerance? Because evidently uh, there seems to be that in agreement on that or there's still work to be done. I mean, uh, we want a more brotherly type society. And that's not daydreaming. We're going to do this in an ever-changing world, a difficult world. But what I would say on that whole issue of tolerance is good understanding. Indeed, today, everybody is living through this. We have a challenge that even after, after all the uh, media uproar and that uh, life will uh, come back to its uh, normality, it's even at that moment that it's even more important to show uh, this uh, tolerance. I tell all Quebecers of all origins this uh, this uh, message. Uh, I want to go through to uh, go back to the expression a moment ago. It's not only the Muslim community that has been affected, it's we, the citizens of the city of Quebec, that have been affected. That's important because that's how I've been feeling since last evening. I've felt this. Yes, that is what, what we're feeling. We have to find ways of expressing it. You will remember the terrible massacre of Charlie Hebdo in Paris. People came down in the streets. And even here in the Quebec, we said, I am Charlie. Well, here in the Quebecers, all Quebec have been the victims of this attack. Everybody, everybody has been affected. Mayor Labon, you said that we haven't been shielded from this, but uh, it's a safe city, Quebec. Uh, we know that, and safety is important. You know, I always said, and, and people would look at me skeptically. Last week, there was a meeting here of all those responsible for safety throughout the province. I came back to that theme and I said, we have had incidents without murders, but we were probably uh, the most safe place. So imagine just how we feel today after that attack. It's hit you head on. Yes, and how come it happened here in the Quebec? Might be pretentious to say so, but when we know who we are, how we live, I mean, it's very much surprising. And we're all mourning today. Everybody has to stand up here in the Quebec and say, together, very strong, this is the kind of society we want. This is the kind of society we want to live in. That is important, and that is what we want as a result of this. Madame Morin from Le Soleil, do you fear reprisals uh, throughout the province? My goodness, I don't want to think of that kind of a scenario, but no doubt the police forces are thinking about this, yes, and, the, and that's very much the reason why the safety conditions have been enhanced a little bit everywhere on, on the, uh, the territory here and on the province, and we've heightened this uh, method of uh, surveillance. Indeed, we hope that this will be it, uh, but the authorities, uh, police officers and everything are, and throughout the world for that matter, have been mobilized. You should understand as well that uh, if we've been examining all this is that, of course, it's the image projected by our city. We are an international city and throughout the world, and what kind of a message now has been given? Uh, 
So, in upcoming days, we will be analyzing all this. This is the kind of discussion that I've had with my friend, uh, Yvon Mayer, and Mrs. Hidalgo, the mayor of the city of uh, uh, Paris. This is the kind of discussion we have had, but that's it. How can you rebuild the feeling of belonging and this image projected of the city of Ottawa? Well, we'll deal with this later. As to the vigil, is it possible because there are citizens that are going to want to participate? Where, what time, when? Is it this afternoon, this evening? We'll do what has to be done. It will be at uh, Notre Dame de Foix Church, uh, but we will be giving more details a little bit later. And we're going to go a little bit further on this because now we're just sort of. Uh, living hour by hour. We'll do everything that has to be done, I can assure you. Uh, there has, has to be a good framework, a good surrounding if, if there is going to be a gathering. As representatives of the Muslim community, could you tell us what exactly was in place as to security measures at the Islamic Center? And were you coping with a climate of fear or intolerance before this happened? No, we weren't living in a climate of fear, but we took precautions. We have surveillance cameras everywhere, outside, inside the mosque. Uh, we didn't want to say, well, one day we might be attacked. At least uh, uh, we have been cautious and have taken the necessary precautions. Was there any indication to us? Well, for the past two or three years, there's always individuals that appear in society and that insult the one or the other because people aren't like them. Uh, there have been posters, there have been swastikas on our walls, uh, there has been that pig's head, uh, you know, a, a saying, enjoy your meal. No, uh, in the mentality of some people who see notoriety, who seek publicity, who want to be in the media, in headlines, do not give them the opportunity of doing that, because that is what they want, those who have attacked us. So we took all precautions necessary, but it's never enough. For that reason, in days to come, we will be calling upon the authorities to help us see how exactly that safety and that feeling of security can be enhanced. I mean, it's not only religious associations, it's all associations that run the risk of being attacked. So so this is a bad timing now, but it, we can learn from it. And that is, and we don't want to be the guinea pigs, but we are apparently, and we will do something about it. A moment ago, you only spoke about us, one religion. Uh, uh, but there are, an, uh, we, we are pacifists. Six of our brothers died last night. They were with us. I saw them. They were praying alongside of me. I mean, they were killed in their backs because they were praying. Because they were praying in the front. And these guys came in and they killed them. And then they left orphans in their wake. I mean, this is... I feel for the children and for the survivors and for families. Jean-Louis Lacroix, Jean Lacroix, one of the radio stations. Did you know those, uh, those uh, individuals? Were they known by the Muslim community, to your knowledge? Uh, did you have any contact with them? Had you? Are these people who, who attended the mosque from time to time? No, you never met them on the street or anything? No, no, apparently not. Well, that's it then. Thank you so much. No. Okay, yes, now is the time for questions in English. One last one in French. I was wondering by listening to the radio, it was one of the radio stations in the Quebec, they were already speaking about calls for division. I wondered if you have anything to, do, to say about that. What do we do when this is happening? Happening publicly. Well, if these messages, and yes, and I saw a few articles on that topic for that matter. 
I explained dernière, last nous evening that collectively we wanted to uh, protect the freedom of expression and the consequence of that we can say just about everything you want because of freedom of the press because this is a gift we were given the other consequence is let's let's be very aware of what might happen let's act quickly without any compromise in the way we will react to incidents of this uh, type if somebody at the moment wants to exploit to sow the seeds of division in our society all we can say to that individual is you're a fool and you're on the wrong track now questions in English thank you Canadian press um, a lot of the politicians who've been speaking to reporters they talk about being shocked about being surprised a lot of the Muslim community speaking to reporters in Montreal and Quebec City, they're not talking about being surprised as much. Even yourself, not long ago, you mentioned that one or two of your political opponents speak in ways that, that are reminiscent of the European far right. So what role does Quebec's political, uh, the climate, the rhetoric have to play in this attack? Well, let me be very clear today. There are no political parties. We all speak with the same voice. Uh, all Quebecers are united in the solidarity that we are witnessing today. But I will just repeat uh, what I said yesterday. Spoken words matter. Written words matter. They can, of course, express an idea, but they can hurt. They can hurt very much, and we should all be cognizant of that. And uh, your, your colleague this morning uh, blamed the attack, uh, partly at least on Donald Trump and the rhetoric north of, uh, south of the border. What do you have to say about I, that? I will not go there. We are obviously in a world where people tend to divide themselves rather than unite themselves. This is why our country, Canada and Quebec, our nation in Quebec here, has to remain a beacon, a landmark of tolerance and openness in this troubled world. And this is the challenge that is be before us today. As I said in French, it's normal in times of crisis that everyone will speak with the same voice of tolerance, integration, and inclusion. <coughs> Sorry, the real challenge will be two weeks from now to continue saying this, to refuse any compromise towards intolerance or exclusion. This will be the true cha challenge. I'm sure we will rise to that level, to that, to that occasion. Is Quebec City a tolerant city and a beacon to the world? Yes. You know, our society uh, is a very open, tolerant, and hospitable place. But we are not different from other societies. We have the same devils in our society. Xenophobia, racism, exclusion exist in Quebec too. Our role as uh, leaders is to express without any compromise our rejection of these type of thoughts and, uh, and attitudes. But we should not be complacent about our society. We, we of course, are envied by the whole world, and hence the, the dismay around the world today. But we also have to recognize that we always have things to work on in, in a society as uh, diverse as it is today, and it will become even more diverse in the future. So let's not only start, but continue working together towards inclusion and full citizenship for everyone. Hi, this is a question for Mr. Labidi. Uh, State your name, please. Alison Northcott with CBC News. Um, I just want to hear, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the, the, the community members and friends that you've lost, what, what, what the community is going through with this loss. Uh, speak, uh, uh, the question, please. Yeah, I just want to hear uh, about the loss, if you could tell us a little bit about some of these community members and friends that you've lost and what it's like for, for the community to lose these people. It's a veritable tragedy. A very uh, big uh, uh, tristesse. Sadness. 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 Very big sadness in our community. Mm -hmm. All the community. Because we, 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 uh, we take uh, together to add as a brother and we love uh, each other. And uh, there is a, it's a very, very big tragedy. Yeah, now, as we heard just before from our colleague yeah. here. Me, we, me I, have, I, have, um, I have a message for uh, all the media to, to try to, 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 uh, to, uh, to personify the dead people. Mm -hmm. Because we have professor in university, we have uh, commerce uh, uh, shopkeepers. shopkeepers, and we have 
many, many kind of uh, key contribute to society. And uh, I, I, I want uh, to, uh, for the media to personify the dead people. Each one of its uh, uh, family, uh, uh, papa, papa of family, and uh, uh, father. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, want, I want that this humanity uh, be uh, uh, in, your, uh, in your media, uh, to, to, uh, to express this in media, please. Because uh, me, for example, I have, I have a friend, a uh, professor in university. I, I know him very well. It's a very, very, very gentleman. How this man ch uh, dead as a, in, 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 in circumstances like that? It's a very, very, very big tragedy for us. And uh, we have a sadness. We, we cannot uh, express our, our, our sadness. All the people, me personally, last, yesterday, all the time, all the night, the phone ring, ringing from all over the world, from Algeria, from Tunisia, from, uh, from uh, Somalia, from, uh, from uh, Senegal, from France, from uh, Almani. Because we have, we have many brothers who, who, who are part in, 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 the, in their, in their uh, country, and they ask about their, uh, their loved people and uh, try to, to, to know if you are the dead or, the, or not dead people. And so it's, it's a very, very, very big tragedy for us, the community. If I may add, well, this is what those guys asked this morning. Well, explain what happened in the community for sure, but also when he says personify, he says explain the story of each of those guys that has been killed, okay? Where they come from, what they were doing, how they were, they've been involved in the community, their own story. Their families. Their Children. families, just to explain that those guys were, first of all, human. And we're gonna, we're gonna help them to do it with what we could, we could call a, a human touch. This is what we're gonna try to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Angelica Montgomery, CBC News. Um, uh, Mr. Ben Abdallah, uh, est-ce que vous parlez anglais? Uh, just, uh, I try to. <laughs> yeah. I have a good translation. <laughs> <laughs> you had talked about how this mosque had seen a pig's head put in front of it in the summertime. Was that incident taken seriously enough? Were, do you feel that, that your community has been protected enough? Mm -hmm. I think yes, we have protector enough, but it's, we say also it's not enough because somebody can uh, appear, appear uh, yeah. and uh, create other uh, situation. Yesterday is uh, a few people with uh, a racist uh, thing. After that, that uh, drawing on the uh, Kurogami. Yeah? Uh, after that, it's uh, head of pigs. Today, it's, uh, we, we cannot say we, we, we are protected, but we have to be very, very, very vigilant, careful, careful, careful for our community. Very, really, uh, really, we are disturbed that why we have not uh, a good word to express our uh, our situation now in 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 other English, in other language. We are French people. We speak French people here in Quebec. If I may also add, because that came to the uh, police department in Quebec City, that has been taken very seriously, you have to say that. And the, the problem is that probably, and we had the discussion this morning, we didn't get back to them with the, the information. That pig head story went as high as, as RCMP, at the federal level, at the national level. So I have to say and explain again, it has been taken very seriously. The only problem probably, and this is what we're going to try to, to refit, is the, the information didn't get back to the community. But sometimes it has to be done like that. Because we, we're, you know, we, we're in a certain kind of matter that has to be sometimes maybe too much secret, we have to say. 
Cindy Sherwin from CTV News. Premier Couillard, you, you don't, of course, as you said earlier, want to comment on why this happened yet. Uh, but given what's going on around the world, and the world is watching, of course, has this caused you to reevaluate uh, the state of racial tension, given that this happened, and given what's going on south of the border? Do you see a connection, not literally, but in terms of the mood? Uh, we know that this horror has been based on intolerance and hatred towards one specific community. It's too early to say exactly what kind of message these people, horrible message they wanted to, to send. I think we will know once the inquiry goes forward. Uh, we have been preoccupied with this uh, in Quebec. We are actually the Minister of Immigration with, with us today is uh, spearheading a group on uh, systemic racism in Quebec, trying to see how we can address that issue and, and work on it. Because we should not, again, be complacent or naive, but we should not be too negative our, about our society. Quebec is a good, I'm generally loving society, but we have these devils in our society as well, like other societies have, and we, ha we have to recognize that and, and fight them. C'était la dernière question. On va en prendre une dernière et c'est terminé après. Merci. Thank you. My name is Stephanie Bobo from Quartier Libre. So I'd like to know my uh, previous question in French wanted to know what precise measures are you aiming to take against systemic violence and systemic oppression that's uh, that's succumbing our Muslim and Arab friends here in first, Quebec. First, we have to always use two verbs in the same sentence, fight and prevent. There will be no compromise on our desire to fight extremism, violent uh, manifestations of intolerance, and of course, terrorism. And as we speak today, we have young Canadians and Quebecers fighting uh, terrorism around the world and risking their lives in our name. This is the first verb that has to be mentioned in that sentence. The Education second one is prevent. The second one is prevent. And we've heard about this today. And we know that in Montreal, for example, there's a very active center fighting radicalization. The mayor uh, is wa wants to keep contact with the community and work upstream. And I must say, I heard this morning very interesting testimonies from the community of them acting in their, among their youth, talking to them, making them aware of the importance of the society in which they are and that they have a future in Quebec. And they have been very, very positive in this. I mean Quebecois people. Well, we have to tell them that first we are all Quebecois. The first mistake is to start like this. I am Quebecois, he's not a Quebecois. No. He is a Quebecois, I am a Quebecois too. Okay? That's the first thing we must say. Once we say this, then we talk to each other. And maybe one thing that could be done very practically for our fellow Quebecers of all origins, today, next week, next month, if you walk past uh, someone of the uh, Muslim community, why don't you stop and say hello and welcome? By way of conclusion, the chair from the Islamic Center will offer a prayer in Arabic. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so, so much for having come this morning. There will be a vigil this evening, and we are comforting everyone as best as we can, uh, Quebec citizens, Canadians, that are going to be contributing positively to this vigil. Uh, and so I will conclude uh, from from a reading from the Quran. It is a prayer to our God, Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'een اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. أفضيتوس أمان. جزاكم الله خيرا.
Alors, merci. La salle demeure disponible aux journalistes pour Thank la poursuite you. de vos activités. Uh, the room is available to members of the media if you have any questions from the group. Are you still there? la scène des événements. Donc, il y a deux victimes qui étaient en manœuvre de réanimation cardio-respiratoire qui ont été amenées euh, à notre urgence. L'équipe était mobilisée euh, dès l'appel du préhospitalier. Donc, à la première euh, arrivée à 20h25, urgentologue, intensiviste, chirurgien, tout le monde était prêt. Une deuxième victime est arrivée à 20h39 et malheureusement, les décès ont été constatés autour de 21h pour ces deux euh, victimes. Depuis, euh, notre, notre hôpital fonctionne à la normale.